Hi guys, and welcome to another kit review. Okay, so today, as you can see, we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya. In 135th scale, it is Tamiya's Tiger 1, Panzer Kampfwagen 6, late version. And in this particular kit, you also get a figure kit, which is the commander and his crew. As you can tell, it's a Japanese issue. The kit number for this one, this release, I should say, is 89562 and it came out in 2000 okay so there have been rough count 13 or 14 uh, reissues different versions of the tiger one from tamiya since it's in original inception in the early 1970s okay so this as i said is a 2000 one and of course there have been versions out since then all right so let's have a look so as you can see tiger one zimrit you get a commander figure with this you also get separate track links okay it does say complete exterior detailing so we'll have a look at that and accurately reproduced suspension system so i'm not sure if that's going to work or not but it's worth having a look at okay so this particular kit I bought off the internet. It cost me around 30 something dollars Australian. I believe they run at Tigers, Tamiya Tigers, 50 to 60 dollars plus in Australia, depending. It's hard to know sometimes. Okay, so typical Tamiya box art. Unusually, it is not a white background. It is actually a light grey background. Okay, so beautiful box art. Always love that box art. Let's have a look at the rest of the box. So this side you'll see, as usual, three views of the tiger in all over yellow with red, brown and dark green stripes. This looks to be probably a brief history of the tiger commander figure okay on the other side same again so again another all over yellow with slightly different stripes here we have another one with just red brown striping on it two totally different units i couldn't tell you which one because i believe that's probably what the japanese says all right so that's the box that's what it looks on the outside Always impressed by tigers. Who isn't impressed by a tiger tank? Let's have a look inside. Okay, so first off, two aftermarket kits that I got for this. This is uh, Tamiya. All right, stick on Zimrit for the tiger, and also Tamiya engine grill kit. For the tiger right i will give you a look at those um, when we have a look at the sprues anyway first off english japanese instructions all right so english japanese there are also different languages on here too you have german and french there's your japanese okay and also a separate decal painting guide Put those aside first bag out is your tiger one commander and crew kit let me see i will see if i can find the kit number for this because it probably was released separately so i'll put those aside first tank bag out is decals as you can tell exhaust pipes the gun, two different types of gun in this one. Next bag out is the individual track links. Bottom of the hole. Next bag out is the wheels, naturally enough. And next bag out is the upper hull and the turret, plus the single commander figure. Okay, so that's what's in the box. Nothing else. 
In a second we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals, and then we'll have a look at the sprues. Okie dokie, so let's have a look at the instructions. Alright, so first off, as I said, you have um, four languages. English, German, French, Japanese. Picture of the actual model on the front. Okay, that's a fairly easy thing to see. Alright, so let's have a look inside. And as this is a, a later Tamiya kit, there is no sprue layout diagrams. Only the earlier Tamiya kits from the 70s, etc. had a sprue layout included in the instructions. These ones, Tamiya's quality control is pretty high, so I can guarantee you that everything is there waiting for you. Okay, so let's have a look. This is your color list. It is all Tamiya colors. Okay, there is color call outs throughout the kit, but they don't give you the name, so you'll have to keep referencing back to your color list. It would be an idea just to write this on a piece of paper. So as you're traveling through the instructions, you can write next to it, it's this color, that color. Might make it a little bit easier as it comes to painting up as you go along. Alrighty, so. Naturally enough, start with the bottom hull. Okay, as you can tell, the instructions as far as Zimrit coating, etc. are in four different languages. So this you'll find throughout the kit is it does have a couple of different languages for the different things you need to look at, such as lower hull is written in four languages with Japanese being the prime language in this particular kit. Okay, so, lower hull, this is your torsion bar suspension units going on, back of the hull, okay, so as you can tell by the greyed out area, that is your Zimmerit coating. So it does say here, Zimmerit coating was applied to the shaded areas, refer to the separate sheet for Zimmerit simulation. Okay, so it does give you an indication how to put Zimmerit on. As you can see, I did get an aftermarket Zimrit kit from Tamiya. We'll make it a lot easier. Okay, so. Wheels are going on. Just the first of the road wheels. Alright. Then you have the thrive sprockets, idlers, and the rest of the road wheels be put together. Typical Tiger um, suspension and wheel layout interleaved wheels okay so not hard to get this together it's quite easy this is quite a simple kit to put together just about anyone could build this one okay then we've got exhaust pipes going on the back with some tools etc i think hang on we'll move up the back the trickiest part about the exhaust pipe would probably be those um supports for the exhaust pipe cap that would be the trickiest part about this whole bit all right then we go on to building the jack okay this is your snatch block for your cable front armor panel goes on this includes your zimrit parts as well okay so if you're putting zimrit on read the instructions make sure you have everything prepared beforehand this is your machine gun hull going on there is no interior in this tank so it is very basic machine gun with no uh, inside pistol grip or anything else then we just move on to the hatches these do have periscopes which is a good thing okay because that's one of the most obvious things that's missing from a lot of tank kits is the periscopes that go through these armoured sections here. Then we move on to your cables, which you may want to leave off until last after they've been painted. Okay, 
So literally we're up to step eight and the top hull is already going on the bottom. All right, tools, etc. going on. Fairly simple, like I said, fairly straightforward construction. Then we get to, okay, the track links and it does have accessories here which will allow you to um, align the tracks okay in one particular straight line and unfortunately the track links don't just click together you do have to cement them which is a shame all right i like the click together ones better but it is what it is right fairly simple follow the instructions you shouldn't have a problem and then it's a matter of putting the tracks on okay so this will show you how the tracks are supposed to sit in the wheels. I would suggest not putting tracks on until the whole vehicle is painted. Otherwise, you'll have difficulty painting the road wheels, etc. So tracks should always be left to last. And that is literally the lower hull. Then we move on to the turret. More Zimmerit coating on the outside of the turret. So you can only put that on. Once the turret is together, you do get a basic breach mechanism in the turret, which is um, not a bad thing. And it does tell you here, select either the late version or final version. You do need to put in a couple of holes if you're putting in a late version, etc. All right, so you can make a late or final version. It's entirely up to you. Same goes for the main gun. As you can see, there are slight differences in the actual main gun and turret fit out. Not huge, just a little bit. Late version, hatches, open or closed, entirely your choice. All right, this is the late version gun. Next step is the final version okay so it does say here I'll bring this down a little bit so you can see remove projections shown with this mark all right they are for the final version so if you're doing a late version you need to remove those same again tells you to make a hole okay this is just for a top turret piece for the final version all right, and that is the gun barrel for the final version. All right, there isn't a great deal of difference between them, but uh, there is enough of a difference that you would notice it. Okay, so then we just carry on putting spare track links on the side of the turret. Commander's ring. Turret bin. More spare track, spare track links. <laughs> the... Uh, anti-aircraft machine gun is an optional although by late war most of them had it if you could fit it what you got to remember though is the German tanks you had a choice you could have an anti-aircraft machine gun or a hull machine gun one or the other is usually the way they moved they didn't have three machine guns fitted it was easier to remove the hull machine gun and mount that as an anti-aircraft and then you dismount that and put it back in the hull all right depending on what the situation was at the time all right so of course if you want this to be a fully operational tank with uh, all mod cons where the crew has actually managed to find a spare machine gun yeah go for it all right turrets done Right, mud guards are going on the side, cable on the side, rear mud guards, and that's it done, finished completely in 15 steps. So, this is an easy kit to build, um, especially if you don't bother with the Zimrit. If you are putting a Zimrit on, just read the instructions a couple of times. And just make a note of where the grayed out areas are. 
Okay, so that's the instructions for the actual tank. This is the color and markings guide. As you can see, it also gives you the colors for the commander figure. I refer to box art for camouflage pattern and other markings. That's a cheap way of doing it. Simple all over yellow. Red, brown, green. Camouflage. That's it. Pattern is entirely up to you. Half the time they came straight out of the factory to the field in yellow. And then it was up to the crews or the um, regimental battalion company field maintenance guys to paint the tank up to suit the local conditions. And it stayed that way for quite a while. Okay, on the other side, here we have the Zimmerit coating instructions. How to do it, how to make it on. So once you put the Zimmerit on, you drill the holes. Okay, sounds fairly straightforward. Read the instructions carefully before you start and you shouldn't have a major problem. Okay, and that is the tank. The only other thing I'll show as far as instructions are concerned is this one. This is for the Tiger One, oops, sorry, Commander and his crew. The kit number on this one is exactly the same as the kit number for the Tiger. Okay, so 89562. So I can only assume that possibly later they were issued separately or not at all. I need to do some more research on that one. Anyway, just tells you the four crew members on the other side, the painting, and as you can tell, figure assembly and painting, they are wearing camouflage uniforms and they are wearing what you could call P dot, okay, spring or autumn camouflage. So the colors are all Tamiya. It doesn't tell you what colors they are. So you'll have to look that up. My best advice is to actually look up on uh, YouTube or the internet. Best way to paint those camouflage colors if you're going to go down that road. Okay, so that's the instructions and painting for the crew. Let's have a look at the decals. Fairly straightforward, not much of the decals, literally only markings for five tanks at the most. It does have a copyright on here, Tiger One late version, 1989. So that's when this particular tank itself came out, 1989. And then in 2000, they added the commander and his crew. And then they gave it a brand new kit number. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. Basically, five tank numbers that you can use at the most. All right, so that's the decals and the instructions. In a second, we'll have a look at the sprues. Okay, so first up, we'll have a look at the aftermarkets that I bought for this kit. So first is the Zimra. As you can see, it is late production Zimra kit. Covers front, side and everything. And the kit number is 12647. It says it right there, and this is definitely a genuine Tamiya one. Okay, so as you can see, high quality option parts add professional touches. If you're a bit iffy about putting your own Zimmerit on, I suggest going for an aftermarket. And if you do get a Tamiya one for a Tamiya kit, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. So that's the aftermarket Zimmerit. I'll give you a photo of that. The other aftermarket I got was also a genuine Tamiya kit. As you can see, it is Tiger One Series grill set. 
and the kit number here is 35179. So that's good reference for you. I'll give you a photo of this one, the Grill Photo Etch, as well as the Zimrit. Okay. Just so you can keep an eye out for those. And first off, now we get to sprues, we will have a look at the hull. As you can see, fairly plain. There's bolt detail on here, very little. There is even some hatch detail on the bottom, plus a moulding point right in the middle, which will have to be removed. Okay, unlike the earlier Tamiya kits, this is not a motorised one. Let's have a look at the... There we go, copyright 1989. Okay, so this kit is 31 years old okay god makes you feel old doesn't it all right so fairly basic hull not much to see there let's have a look at the top of the hull Okay, so there's your top, turret, rear, commander figure, gun mantlet, front, okay. So most of this will have a uh, Zimmer on it. So let's have a look. Really nice hinge detail up here for the side mudguards. Let's have a look at the back deck. Oh, sorry, that went out of focus. Okay, so there's no engine. No interior. So that is why it is definitely recommended you get yourself a set of rear grills from aftermarket. It doesn't have to be Tamiya. It can be anyone else's so long as it fits this kit. So that you can't just see straight into an empty tank. All right, so as you can see... Come on, focus. Your commander gets two heads. Nice detail. I do like the detail. This being a later Tamiya figure, the facial details are really nice. Let's have a look at the body. Yep. Fairly crisp. A little bit of mold line cleanup, but nothing major for him. That's a spare cap. Gun mantlet. Okay, so read the instructions. There is a difference between a late and a final version. Turret halves, not much to see. Standard Tiger. Rear of the tank. So most of the detail in the rear of the tank is tools and exhaust pipes, of course, so that's standard for a Tiger. This is your late version uh, panel for the grunt for the gun mantlet top of the tank okay so that bit and that one and that one those are the parts that need to be removed for a late version and a hole needs to be drilled in here now let's have a look at the bottom okay right there is where you need to drill the hole for the final version. Okay, so that is top of the hole and the turret. Next, we'll have a look at, that's the turret bin, it was loose in the bag, 
on here you've got as you can see two gun barrels okay so that's because you have a late and a final version these are your track guides to make sure that you get the tracks in a straight line that is your gun breech to say I was paused then because it's not really a breech is it it is basic gun breech exhaust pipe covers cables of course for the top and the side of the vehicle commander's hatch etc so let's have a close-up look at these move that out the way there's not much to see there okay so let's have a look at this bro let's start with the cable detail okay not bad typical Tamiya detailing turret hatch I'll just turn this around as you can see that does have some nice detail on the inside the locking points these are your covers for the exhaust pipe if you were to try and put a bit of damage on those you would have to thin them down because they were literally just thin metal um, have a look at the exhaust uh, covers for Tiger 131 at the tank museum in Bovington okay you'll see how damaged they really get okay that's your gun breech fairly basic not much detail there that's your jack and tools this is your optional anti-aircraft machine gun as I said they normally use the hull or possibly the turret machine guns because no tank really was issued with three machine guns if you could scrape up an extra one good luck to you cable for the top of the tank as I said those are your guides for the track links and your two gun barrels as you can tell the difference unfortunately they are two parts so you will have to deal with a mold seam your side skirts and I can already see an issue there because these are bent so a bit of straightening or possibly when it comes to building I may just cut and leave a couple of those sections out all right so that is your gun barrel and cables etc okay so next up two sprues exactly the same so we'll keep that one put this one aside and as you can see these are your wheels so these are your what should be torsion bar axles your drive sprockets your idler and your road wheels so let's have a close look okay so bolt detail they're better than earlier tank models they are not super flat sided detailed but for a 35th scale tank they're quite good that is your exhaust armored cover which does have a texture on it okay so that's nice a bit of armor texture is really good nice detail on the on the wheels though okay so even though this kit is or well, this sprue is basically 31 years old the detail is really nice really really nice and will come up really well with a nice wash on it the very small handles there but connection to the sprue is quite light and I reckon you get those off quite easily all right so that's your wheels 
really nice detail. As I said, you get two of those. To make up all the wheels. Next we'll have a look at and you get three of these. Okay these are your individual track links. Let's have a look. Okay so unfortunately yes they don't clip together. You will need to glue these. I believe it does recommend let's turn it over does recommend leaving them for about 12 hours basically overnight once you've glued them but I wouldn't construct the tracks probably until the last thing detail on these well the guides don't have holes in them um, but that you really won't notice on this tank purest wood but otherwise really nice detail on the track and the good thing is because they're individuals they will give you a decent track sag which most tanks did have okay and that is the last of the tank the only other sprue i've got to show you is the bonus figure kit and there you have it four figures so literally you do already get a commander figure and now you have five a crew of five let's have a look at the details let's have a look at the faces first so he's a very happy chap. He's quite happy and smiling. They all seem quite happy. I can see a bit of flash in the mold mark. Mold mark, I mean mold line, sorry, for these heads and also on the legs, etc. But nothing untoward and nothing that wouldn't be too hard to clean up the uniform detail is quite nice so as i said these guys are wearing camouflage uniform they do have some badges etc medals etc but that is really nice detail on there so they're quite good. I like those figures. As I said, internet references for the camouflage uniforms. I believe there's plenty of references on YouTube as to how to paint these uniforms. So otherwise just go for straight black or field gray and you won't go wrong. Okay, and that literally brings us to the end. As I said, all up, there are eight sprues in this kit. Okay, so it is an easy build. Would not be more than a weekend build. The only fiddly part would be the tracks. And, uh yeah but definitely to make life easier if you do buy one of these have a look around for the aftermarket zimrit kit and aftermarket griddle kit that's definitely a worthwhile investment on this tiger one okay guys and that's it that brings us to the end of this one 
I hope you got something from it. As I said, this kit came out in 2000. That is the kit with the figures. But this particular tiger came out in 1989 by itself. All right. So, as usual, I do hope you got something from it. And until next time, thanks for watching. And I'll see you later.